Hello everyone, Amigo Aaron here. So, a couple months ago I heard about a project or a, uh, a hardware item that had came out and it was called the uh, Coco Keys to USB. Uh, it, was a, uh, it was a little item that lets you hook a car computer 2 or 3 uh, keyboard into a little board and it would let you use that as a USB device. And I had seen something similar on a C64 called the Key Ra, and I'd used it to build a, a C64 uh, with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know, one of those deals. So when this item crossed my radar, my ears perked up because I was like, well, you know, that's a neat idea. And the Cocoa's got a lot of space in there. You could probably put a Raspberry Pi in this thing. And of course, I've got a I've got a Coco 3 here, which I'm extremely happy with. But, you know, I'm always looking. <coughs> so, uh, flash forward a few months, and I he start hearing a lot of talk about uh, the Coco Pi, the uh, car computer uh, front end for a Raspberry Pi, and even people are using the Coco keys to USB to stick into a color computer. And I thought to myself, wow, that, that was quick, you know. Uh, having having done that project with the C64, uh, it was just that uh, it works, but uh, it worked okay. It worked, it went well, except for the fact that the keyboard got lost in the mail for like eight months. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I didn't use it that much. And part of the reason I didn't like it was uh, I didn't I just don't like dealing with Linux. Hey, uh, I'm just not uh, I'm not that well skilled in a Linux environment, and uh, to dip your toe in that pool, uh, you need uh, a good Linux skills. You can burn, you can knock off an SD card, stick it in a Raspberry Pi and be pleased as punch. But if you're like me and you just can't leave well enough alone and you want to add stuff or make changes or, or generally screw around with stuff, it makes it extremely difficult. Plus, I don't have any Linux computers in the house and I had trouble, um, you know, putting data back and forth. Between, it was just a hassle. It's, I didn't like it. I'm, now that's nothing bad against the uh, against the Raspberry Pi. It's just that I, uh, I'm a dumb guy. What can I say? So uh, I didn't have any thoughts of putting a Raspberry Pi in a Coco, uh, despite the fact that I do have a Coco uh, box over here, Coco Two with a bad motherboard. And I thought to myself, what could I do to uh, to? I mean, I guess I could get a Coco uh, a Raspberry Pi. And I changed my mind because I remembered. That setting behind a TV in my family room was uh, a item called an Atomic Pie. Now, the Atomic Pie was a uh, bizarre uh, project that was out uh, last year. Uh, it was a it was kickstarted at first, but then they ended up selling these things. And what they were were they were little uh, they were little boards. Uh, they're bigger than a uh, they're bigger than a Raspberry Pi. Basically, because of the heat sink going on, yay big. You'll see it. Uh, but uh, the uh, the one thing about these was they had the ability to run Windows <clears throat> and Linux. They could run both. And I thought to myself, you know, I could take this Atomic Pie and stick it in the Coco case so it would fit, and use the US uh, Coco keys to USB, and then you got something that I could actually get behind because. I could actually do some work on it and enjoy myself as opposed to just continuously struggling to bang my head against the wall trying to use uh, the the uh, the admittedly brilliant front end for the for the uh, all the uh, retro pie stuff which I you know like I said I've got one I love it but it just it was I found it difficult to work on and so thus begin the task of trying to figure out how to do it uh, it wasn't super difficult. I mean, let's face facts, as far as projects go, this is sort of a low wind uh, because um, I'm effectively, you take a Raspberry Pi or an Atomic Pi in my case, you stick it in the case, you run some wires out of it, you hook the, co the uh, Coco Keys USB into it, you're good to go. I mean, if, that's not that tough. Uh, and then you could make it look nice or whatever, which I didn't. Um, so I thought to myself... Um, you probably need to do a little bit more just to make it interesting because what have you done otherwise? And and if you've got a color computer uh, like two or three, uh, the and you have experience with the SDC, the uh, 
SD card solution for the Yokoko, you realize that that's such a, a brilliant, streamlined um, way to load your games that <laughs> it's tough to beat. It really is. But not everyone has a Coco. And so uh, the second part of my project was going to be on the software side, trying to uh, trying to do something to make loading the uh, various games on the Coco fun, which of course I'm all about games. I don't do anything with the Coco or the Amiga or the Atari I don't do it, or Commodore. I, all I want to do is play games. That's it. And so thus began the uh, the project. Uh, I had a Coco Keys USB shipped in, uh, and if you saw my video on it, uh, uh, Paul uh, Fisarelli really helped me out because I had a real unusual keyboard that we had to actually style up a, a different type of plug to get to work, but it worked. And Paul was like a superstar, and he even also helped me when I accidentally ripped the USB end off of my uh, off the Arduino, Arduino board that goes on the Coco Keys to USB. He actually sent me another one. He offered it to me for free. I had to pay him a little stuff, but he's a real super nice guy. And he stands by his products, so you should absolutely, if you need uh, Coco Keys to USB or any of his other products over at the, his uh, outfit there, please give him your business. He's a stand-up fellow. Uh, so once I had that ironed out, it was simply assembling the uh, the thing and then getting onto the software. So I'm going to jump ahead here to uh, showing the finished product and what's under the hood, and then we'll take a look at the Coco uh, Atomic Coco running some stuff, so you can see what I was up to there. So, I hope you find it interesting, uh, and I appreciate you uh, clicking on it. Have a look. Probably asking yourself, what the heck's in this thing? And since it's so hard to take apart, I figured I'd just show you right now <laughs> before, because I don't ever want to take it apart again. So, as you can see, it's a mild mannered, kind of crummy looking Coco too. I'm going to pop the lid off here. And there's no screws in it right now. So, <laughs> this actually looks pretty pretty wild when you first see it. So, what you've got here now is a slightly different interior. Um, that is your Atomic Pie. Now, uh, you can see here I added a, a real shoddy USB, uh, additional USB, this thing only had one. And so there's that. Now this is the actual onboard USB and that runs to this. That's mounted in a cartridge slot. That's a uh, just a simple USB 3 hub that I've got there. And then over here you've got your SD card, play your software loader, you've got your, out, your uh, power, the only thing coming out of this thing is your power and your HDMI. Uh, just too much cabling here, I'll be the first to admit it. But I didn't know how much I'd need, so I uh, overcompensated, as I always do. So being neat was never my strong suit. Um, you can see the antennas here and here are for your uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, I pulled this off an old laptop, and you can see the connections right uh come on zoom in dummy right there put the levers in there it goes uh that's your raspberry pi so what makes this thing go well uh, at the risk of taking this thing apart i'm going to do it uh, just to show you so underneath here if you look down in the hole there you will see there it is that's a Raspberry, or that's a Coco Keys to USB adapter. Uh, that's hooked into the uh, the handmade USB port, uh, and that is a, a great device. And I, I got to thank the fellow that makes it because he's helped me out a lot, including giving me a real good deal on a replacement part. Um, so I'm going to put this back together, and I'll kind of show you what it looks like when everything's put back in. So stand by. So. We've put it back together. I haven't put the screws in yet, but I'll show you what we've got here. So when you've got it closed up, I can drag this over here. What you've got there in the cartridge slot is your uh, is your hub, and then the back of this thing is pretty simple. Um, these ports are just blocked out, and uh, you've got a uh, HDMI cable. Now I could have put an adapter in there as I did on my. Uh, C64 Pi, but 
it's just such a hassle. At the end of the day, it's a waste of money. Uh, this thing will work just better because it's more sturdy. And then I can, uh, if I need to actually plug a cable into it, I've got a little adapter. So it's easier that way for me. And then, again, same thing with the power. I could have put a, I could have rigged it up. But it's easier just to have a power cable. And the, uh, this is the power cable that we use with the Atomic Pie. Top dollar when they say power adapter written on there for ease of use. This is just, uh, got this off Amazon. And then the one thing I added uh, in the, my downtime waiting for my part to come in was this uh, right here, which is a, which is a momentary switch just to uh, turn it on and off. That's all there is to it. I mean, it, when you plug it in, it automatically comes on, but this way you can turn it on and off whenever it's been activated. So it, it's it's a help. That's it. There is your Atomic Coco, and we will fire this thing up and see what you think. So, uh, you've seen uh, what's in the Atomic Coco. Let's talk about a few other little items here. Uh, I had a, uh, a wired Xbox 360 uh, stick hooked up to it, which I really liked, but it went bad. So I'm using now a Bluetooth PlayStation 4 stick. These are good sticks. Um, that little light I stuck in there just so I know it was on. Uh, and these are just little, little lights, different colored lights that just stick in the USB port. That's all they do. <laughs> they just light up. So I picked one up there. So, I've booted this thing up to uh, uh, to a uh, to its main screen here. Now, <coughs> this is Windows 10. Uh, it looks it looks strange, but it, it is Windows 10. Uh, it's a very stripped down version of it. Uh, the, uh, the the Atomic Pie comes with I think it's 16 gigs of onboard memory. Not enough for Windows, uh, but uh, if you strip down and prune and cajole and do every little trick in the book, uh, you can fit Windows 10 onto a 16 gig drive. It doesn't like it. <laughs> and you remove, I'm talking you remove everything, and then you make everything not save on, this, on the main drive to save space. Uh, so I managed to smash everything I needed on there and still have two gigs left over, if you can believe it, uh, for a swap. And so that's the main drive. Then I've got a SD card in this and also a USB drive, which houses the uh, the CoinOps files, uh, which are what I'm using. CoinOps Next is the front end I'm using. I've got uh, a, a decent amount of experience with it, and uh, uh, I always wanted to get a nice front end. It's funny, when we were taught, when I was on Coco Talk a while back, and we talked about having new people join the Coco family, and I talked to Stevie about the, uh, emulating the SDC, uh, the tremendous front end with gra and the uh, hardware piece that makes it real easy to navigate the Coco without having to actually have any experience or do anything hard. And I thought, well, that's where I sort of had the idea to uh, to to do this. I mean, it had been kicking around in my head, but that was the that was the final push I needed to get it going. So. Just to make this look cleaner and kind of neat, I just I stripped everything out of the desktop here, and so if you cruise your mouse over yonder, uh, you will see the uh, toolbar kick up. I didn't want a bunch of Windows crap messing up my Cocoa stuff, you know what I'm saying? And so, basically, you click on this. Now, normally, you won't uh, you won't have to do that. I usually have this in the boot up, but I want to. Uh, I want to do some work on it. So, this is an ex inc extremely stripped down version of Quantops. I really wanted to run, run to run Coco stuff. I mean, it's in a Coco, right? Uh, it can run other stuff. Uh, it can run, it's not going to run like Dreamcast or anything, but it will run a lot of 8 bit computer stuff. But the Coco stuff's what I'm focusing on. So, there wasn't a, any Coco stuff out there uh, in terms of uh, help. No one had done it, as far as I could tell, uh, really. The amount of artwork, screenshots, everything was practically none. In fact, I'll show you the only thing I found uh, was this. This screen right here uh, uh, that someone used for uh, probably a hyperspin or something. And this is the only video I found, too. So uh, if you see some kind of uh, questionable video 
or icons in this. It's because I had to I had to manufacture all these. Literally every background. The only things I didn't have to manufacture were effectively the uh, someone had went through and digitized all the uh, cartridge boxes. So that was <laughs> that was great. Uh, but everything else I pretty much had to do myself. And I am no artist, as you will soon know. So we'll start here. I've got this in two sections, and I've they're split like this because um, of the way they load, really. And I, there are ways to mix them all into one big directory, but I thought, eh, this is also a pretty good way to separate stuff. Uh, and eventually, I'll probably, you know, cassettes a little bit different. I haven't tackled that yet, but so, and most stuff on cassette, a lot of it was already on disc. So, but someday I'll fool with that. I've got plenty to do already. So, we click the button here, and uh, we are into the, the directory of this now you can see I mean it's not rocket science the little monitor has the video the uh, cartridges are on the right and then behind them whenever you scroll to a new one you'll see a little picture uh, pop up and then the video now <coughs> I had to shoot all these videos <laughs> if you can believe it and so uh, they're uh, I, I did resize them nicely I mean eventually I figured out how to how to capture video out of mess and have it fit my little monitor here, uh, but uh, um, again, it's not the best. I, honestly, I, I did the best I could. I'm, I, this is sort of not my bag, uh, art the art side of this, which is always, this is the thorn on my side, just the same as arcade stuff when it comes to like woodworking and stuff. I strictly do the digital stuff. You'll see a couple of these that, ha that don't work, that don't look right. I'll give you an example right here is one, the castle of, uh, Th Thargrad here, uh, Thargrad, Tharo, yeah, whatever. Anyway, you see this error. Well, that error, uh, then you can and you can skip that. The reason it's said that, I just made that as the error screen. Uh, this one didn't work. I've got a couple of these that I couldn't get the boot off the cartridge. So those are a couple of these are still in uh, works in progress. But for the most part, uh, these work pretty well, and uh, everything's got a video. Uh, that I get, I generated again. Some of these you may even see the colors being inversed. Uh, it was a bang bang operation, so that's the kind of stuff I can get, you know, worked out in time. Um, the uh, cartridges uh, were real simple. Like here's another one. I couldn't get Rampage to work uh, for whatever reason. I thought that was strange, uh, and I couldn't get RoboCop to work either. So someone may out there probably knows more about it than I do. Uh, but uh, if you want to play one of these. And you can see uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good collection of stuff. So oh, I should mention that this right here, I kind of made that cartridge. That is, that's just basic. I just in case someone wants to go into basic and fool around. Now, all these are running out of the mess emulator, so um, it, it mess is mess. Can you mount stuff from inside the emulator? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, it's a full fledged Coco emulator, so. Uh, you can uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, this is just a e e ease of use, you know. But I stuck that in there just in case. I don't know. I wanted to fool around in basic for some reason. So let's scroll down here. I'm just going to pick a uh, uh, what's it here? Canyon Climber. You know, I'm a big fan of this game. So once you pick the game you want, you just simply hit the button, and off it, off it goes. Now the good thing about the cartridges is that they just pretty much instantly pop up. There we go. And then, now, uh, you are in mess. Uh, and if you watch Stevie's video on um, fooling around in MAME, mess is the same. Um, it can be an annoying. And um, if I were just to distribute this package, people would have to sit at their controllers in, in mess. There's nothing I can do about that. You can't you know, sort of universally set them. You have to, because people want their things their own way. But I can show you what I've done. So, the PlayStation 4 controller, pretty standard stuff. These two analog sticks actually have buttons if you push them down. And so, the way MESS works is, uh, to do anything, really, in the emulator that, wouldn't, that you wouldn't normally do in the computer, you have to basically unlock the keyboard from the emulator, which is, I've, if I push this button, that happens. You saw there, it just said it was unlocked. And then, if I push the other button, this, it brings up your tab menu. This is where you can set your controls, and you can see all the options uh, here that you can do. Now, I've already set this thing up, so it should be good to go. Now, um, 
I'm going to close that. I'm going to put the full mode back on. So I've got mine set up here, uh, as you would expect, and it just it plays just like you would expect Canyon Climber to play on an emulator. Uh, just as infuriating as <laughs> normally would be, uh, but better than the Atari version. So uh, you can mo mosey along. Uh, you can map this stuff however you want. You can put paws on here. You can put ones. One thing I, you know, my goal in this was sort of to make it so you didn't have to use a keyboard. And for some games you don't, but a lot of games ask for quirky stuff just out of the blue. You got to hit clear. You got to hit one. You got to hit space bar something. And to I'd have to go through each game and set them up specifically for that game, which I haven't done. Uh, you could do it, and I may do it one of these days, but I haven't done it yet. Because I've tried to get quantity, not necessarily have everything tailored. Uh, of course, I've already got the keyboard right beside me, so if you, have the, if you have the computer there or a keyboard, you're golden. You don't have to worry about it. So, anyway, when I want to exit a game, of course, you can hit escape, but you can also do this. So, I've, I've got this set up to where if I hit, uh, again, I'm unlocking the, joy, the keyboard there to partial status. And I've, there's, there's a start and a back button if I hit those both at the same time. It should not. It should take me back out uh, to the emulator, and then we can go from there. And voila! Now, so and that's the way all the cartridges pretty much work. Uh, it's pretty standard stuff. So let's go over the discs. The discs were a whole different kettle of fish uh, because uh, you have to load the disc, <laughs> load the game. So <clears throat> this is where I was in a unique position to have a working Coco right beside me to uh, because. Sure, we've got all these discs, but then you have to know what to load off the discs. And so I had the Coco here to look to see what was on the disc so I could set it up. Uh, it's, uh, it, you, you can either mount every one of these discs in emulation, write down what the boot uh, file is, then come back, or you could do it the way I've done it, which is infinitely quicker. <laughs> so it's one of the advantages. Now, I, I've done about 25 disc games. It's funny, I, I sat down and made a list of all the games I wanted to do, and I'm not even a, probably a third of the way through the list in terms of the discs. So. Now, so many, you can see, the, we, of course, we don't, very few of these games have boxes. I mean, so using the, the cartridge boxes without a question. So I went through and made logos for a lot of these, or, or stole them, did whatever I could to, to get a logo. Now, these are not beautiful. Uh, you may mock them at your leisure. Uh, but I did the best I could, uh, given uh, what I had to work with. Uh, and I, I, I was pretty pleased with them, to be completely honest with you. I mean, I thought they turned out okay, but I mean, you know, I can understand when someone's going to be like, this is crap. These logos never appeared with that game. Well, you're right. I manufactured them. I pulled them, some of the graphics like this one, I pulled out of the game and sort of colorized it. I just, you know, you know that one had nothing. Some of these, you know, are like Crystal Castle spelled wrong. Good luck. So I just basically made up some of the logos, so there you go. And all the videos I pulled, I didn't necessarily pull the best videos for all this stuff because I should have pulled in-game videos. Every once in a while I have one where the game is booting and it doesn't really get into the gameplay unless you sit there for a minute, which is, you know, again, those are little tidbits I could go back and, and work out. But I mean, for the most part, I'm pretty happy. So the way these work is pretty funny. Uh, first, you pick the game you want to play. Uh, let's play... Uh, Let's play uh, this one, Anawana. We just played this on uh, Coco Talk a few weeks ago, and I, I always thought this was a neat game. So, when you're ready to load one of these games, you load it just like the cartridges, but it does a lot more intricate dance here. So it comes up just like you'd expect, and then it will type out the command to run, and it will. It's it, and you can hear that it simulates a disc, and then it will load the game. Um, once the game's loaded, effectively it works just like a uh, a cartridge game. I mean, there's not any there's not any extra steps or whatever. Uh, and there you go. And then theoretically, you hit the button and play it. Now, um, something I wanted to mention is that some of these games, as we all know. <laughs> require uh, you to have a, 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 a they don't necessarily differentiate between the joysticks it's infuriating 
And so what I ended up doing was, I'm going to back out of this. I'll show you one of these because I was just playing it. Anyway, escape the same way. You just, uh, you know. So um, I was playing um, Buzzard Bait. And it has the joystick on the, di on, it uses the other joystick. A lot of games do that. There's no, as anyone that has a Coco knows, there's no set uh, port. They just sort of randomly picked a port. I don't know, I don't know why they did it that way. You know, do you think someone would have? Boy, all it takes is you know to someone to step up, but they didn't do it. Nevertheless, uh, this game uses uh, the the a diff the like the second port or the right port. It uses a different port than the game I was playing before this came on. All right, that's all I can tell you. And so what I did was. Um, since I didn't have two, first of all, if you have two joysticks, it doesn't matter. But I would, for testing purposes, and this is one thing you can do with mess that's kind of cool, is uh, for this game, uh, well, let me zoom in here and I'll show you what I mean. So, most games I use these two items as the controls and these as the buttons. For games that require the other stick, I actually use this as the control and this as the button. So you can actually have both controls on one stick without having to swap out sticks. It's lazy. Uh, it, it's not perfect, but it does a decent. It's a decent job, and then you can that way you don't have to worry about uh, you know <laughs> you don't have to worry about uh, messing around here. So here's me playing. When you can see, I'm playing with the, the other stick. Uh, so <laughs> if I was ambidextrous, we'd be laughing. But uh, there you go. So it's something you can do. Mess allows you to all sorts of interesting uh, button combinations and, and uh, options. Uh, including the ability, something else I like about this is the fact that, of course, these are analog joysticks, and so so many Coco games uh, like those analog sticks, and they do. Uh, you know, you're gonna think to yourself, "Oh, this this guy's talking about his butt." No, they do a good job. These these do a pretty good job of simulating the Black Beauties uh, uh, for those sorts of games. So something I, I mean, they're true analog too. So you're you're getting your analog joysticks for the Coco. So you've got the best of both worlds all in one game. Now, am I saying you need to use the, one of these uh, to uh, play Coco? Absolutely not. And of course, this thing you can there are, there are a, a, a plethora of, of USB to Atari style joystick adapters for your PC, and you can use any one of them. You know, a lot of this stuff is just laziness or just I'm trying to use the joystick for as much as I can and not have to use the keyboard. But uh, the keyboard is perfectly fine. Uh, thanks to the, to the Coco uh, uh, keys to USB, it does a great job. That, but the, one of the things is you, when you use st strictly a Coco, you're missing a lot of keys that you would normally have in Windows. It's not uh, uh, it's not a death knell or anything because what are you going to be doing with it in Windows? Nothing. Like I said, I pretty much bypass Windows. That I've got mine set up into Windows now just for demonstration purposes and because I'm working on it. But normally it boots directly into this front end and I never have to touch a mouse or a keyboard. So really the only time you're going to need the keyboard is when you're actually using uh, um, games or whatever that require you to hit a key. Not too bad. And so uh, I, I like to set up. I'll go through some of these uh, disc games real quick just to give you a quick idea of what I put in here. Um, the... Uh, Again, these these icons. <laughs> I do apologize. Some of these are just horrible. Some of these I pulled out of ads. Some of these are just like weird clip arts I found on the net. Some of these actually uh, came from the game itself. Uh, I just had to rip them out, you know. So, <laughs> but uh, I've got a pretty good selection uh, uh, so far. And these all, I will say, everything's been tested, and everything that has a working picture works. Like I said, there's a few of the cartridge games that don't, but the rest of them. Uh, have a nice picture. Um, one thing to note is that the largest portion of what makes the, of the entirety of the size of this package is the video. Uh, the video is the uh, is the because the ROMs, the icons, all the other stuff, even mess itself, they're not that big. So I'd say this whole package here, uh, if if you boiled it down, you'd probably be in for. I don't know. I'm trying to think maybe. You know, five gigs, something like that, and it could be probably pared down even further because I've got some a lot of extra stuff in my mess directory that could get pruned out. So maybe, I mean, really, you could get this down. I said, depending on how much how big the video is, but the video is the largest chunk of it. Um, but that makes it fun, and uh, in today's 
age. I mean, you got to think I've got a I've got a coin ops build that's uh, almost one and a half terabytes in size, uh, and that's be that was before I added this stuff. So, uh, you know, you can get a, a massive collection if you're so inclined. But if you just want to play Coco stuff, it's a, it's pretty much a one and done. And really, adding this stuff is not that difficult uh, once you understand how coin ops works. Uh, another thing is you can always get packs, uh, which basically would just add new games. Which uh, I don't know I, if people want. If, if anyone out there might thinks they might want to have a copy of this or whatever, I mean, I could I could zip it up and upload it somewhere. Uh, but uh, I hadn't planned on doing it. But somebody thinks they might like it, you know, uh, uh, I could do it. So that's you know whatever. Uh, but uh, I will say I I, uh, I like the. Uh, I like the uh, Atomic Pie in the Cocoa. It does a good job. Uh, it doesn't get hot. I was worried how it would get really hot. It doesn't. Uh, because you got to think it's really running a... Uh, it's running a low load, frankly. Sure, Windows is in there, but it's pretty much idle. And I've got all the background services turned off, too. So it's really running very little uh, in there. Uh, the, key, the Cocoa Keys to USB works great. It's perfect for this project. And... Uh, uh, of course, you've got uh, HDMI coming out of this thing, which is what I'm using the capture uh, with. And the HDMI looks it looks real fine, 1080p, you know. Uh, uh, so it looks real good. Um, if you can get your hands on an Atomic Pie, they're only 35 bucks. Last time I checked on uh, uh, Amazon, and they just have that unique distinction of being able to run Windows. And uh, man, if anybody out there wants to get them one. Uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to, uh, you know, knock off a copy of my uh, SD or whatever. We can, we can work something out. Uh, I don't know anyone else that has done Coco stuff, like front-end stuff. So this is probably, <laughs> this is probably in terms of MS-DOS, or listen to me, I'm so old. In terms of Windows, this is probably, I'm probably the only person that's done it that I know of anyway. Uh, so if uh, you're into it, or if you just want some pointers, uh, or uh, if you just want some art, I don't know why you'd want my stuff, but if you want some, you know, I, I'd be happy, I'd be willing to help anybody out that wants it. Uh, so that's pretty much the long and short of it, y'all. Uh, I uh, hope you found it interesting. And uh, like I said, if I, if there's enough interest, I might try to boil this pack down and, and release it. But I don't know if uh, anyone gives a crap <laughs> to, be, to be honest with you. But I love the cocoa. And so I had to do I had to do something. I should mention, by the way, in case anyone thinks I'm an arrogant jerk, which is true. Uh, but uh, if you uh, if you look at this uh, if you look at the opening little video here, it's our old intro, the Coco Show. I assure you that was not for uh, arrogant purposes. I just could not find anything to put there that was Coco that was colorful and mu had music and had and, and and had Coco stuff in it, so I just stuck that in. Just like I couldn't find anything else to put for the disc, so I stuck this in here. Uh, and thanks to whoever made that. Uh, but uh, so and these videos are easily replaceable, and you're not going to break my heart. I'll just put it that way. So anyway, uh, that's all I got. Uh, I will see you guys next time for another project. Until then, adios. Raw mouse. <laughs> adios. <laughs>